China has officially begun selling the world's first atomic-based quantum computer, crossing a line the industry has talked about for years, but rarely reached. The system has already secured real orders, been delivered to major telecom-linked clients, and locked more than 40 million yuan, roughly $5.6 million, in overseas orders in a single day. Now, Google and IBM sit at the center of Western quantum computing, armed with billions of dollars, elite scientists, and access to the most advanced technology on Earth. Yet after more than a decade of effort, their quantum machines are still fragile laboratory experiments, dependent on refrigerator-sized cryogenic systems and usable only under near-perfect conditions. Google's breakthroughs remain demonstrations, not deployments. IBM's roadmaps continue extending into the future, with even the company itself admitting that practical, fault-tolerant quantum computers are still years away. The irony is hard to miss. With unmatched resources and early access to cutting-edge technology, the West is still stuck fighting physics. While China is already putting imperfect but usable quantum systems into real-world operations, to understand why this stands out, it is necessary to understand why quantum computing has remained experimental for so long. Traditional computers process information in a straightforward way. They move step by step, switching bits on and off, one operation after another. Every instruction follows a fixed path, and every calculation must be completed before the next one begins. This model has worked incredibly well for decades, but it comes with limits. As problems grow more complex, the number of steps required grows explosively. Eventually, even the most powerful classical computers begin to slow down, not because they are poorly designed, but because the problems themselves become too large to handle sequentially. Quantum computers operate differently. They use qubits, which can exist in multiple states at the same time, rather than being locked into a simple zero or one. This property allows certain types of problems to be explored in parallel rather than sequentially. Instead of evaluating one possible solution after another, a quantum system can examine many possibilities simultaneously. In theory, this gives quantum machines an advantage in optimization, simulation, and complex complex probability calculations, especially in areas where the number of possible outcomes grows too large for classical machines to handle efficiently. This theoretical advantage is what made quantum computing so compelling in the first place. Problems like modeling molecular interactions, simulating new materials, predicting chemical reactions, or optimizing massive logistical systems suddenly appeared solvable in ways that classical computing could never realistically achieve alone. For years, quantum computing was seen as the next great leap in computation, capable of unlocking entirely new categories of solutions. But in reality, those advantages come with enormous technical costs. Qubits are extremely sensitive to their environment. Heat, vibration, electromagnetic noise, and even tiny material imperfections can cause errors. A small disturbance that would be irrelevant to a classical computer can completely destroy a quantum state. The more qubits a system contains, the harder it becomes to keep them all stable at the same time. Each additional qubit adds another source of potential failure. To keep qubits stable, most quantum systems developed in the West rely on superconducting circuits that must be cooled to temperatures close to absolute zero. At these temperatures, electrical resistance disappears and quantum effects can be preserved long enough to perform calculations. But achieving and maintaining those conditions is extraordinarily difficult. It requires massive cryogenic refrigeration systems, layers of shielding, vacuum chambers, and continuous monitoring. These systems consume huge amounts of energy and occupy large physical spaces. These machines machines are impressive, but they are also fragile, expensive, and difficult to operate. Scaling them beyond research environments has proven slow and costly. Even companies at the forefront of quantum research struggle to deploy these systems outside specialized facilities. But Hanyuan-1 takes a different approach. Instead of superconducting circuits, it uses neutral atoms as qubits. These atoms are cooled using lasers and held in place by optical traps. Their quantum states are controlled with extremely precise light-based techniques. This method avoids the need for cryogenic refrigeration entirely. The system operates in a standard laboratory environment using equipment that, while complex, is far more manageable than ultra-low temperature systems. This choice changes everything about how the machine can be built, deployed, and maintained. Hanyuan-1 is a 100-qubit system, placing it firmly in the current NISQ era of quantum computing. This is the stage where quantum computers are powerful enough to run meaningful experiments and early applications, but not yet capable of full error correction. Every serious quantum project in the world today operates within this same limitation. No one has solved the problem of large-scale, fault-tolerant quantum computing yet. However, what stands out about Hanyuan-1 is its measured performance. Its single-qubit gate fidelity reaches 0.999, while its two-qubit gate fidelity reaches 0.98. These are not theoretical targets or laboratory best cases, they are benchmark 
benchmark results that meet the requirements for practical quantum algorithm testing. At this level, quantum computations can be repeated reliably enough to extract useful results across multiple runs, which is essential for any real application. Equally important is how the system is packaged. The entire machine fits into three standard server racks. It does not require special infrastructure. It does not need a cryogenic plant or exotic cooling systems. Its energy consumption and maintenance requirements are dramatically lower than superconducting alternatives. That alone makes it viable for environments where quantum computing was previously impossible. This is where China's approach begins to diverge from much of the West. Since 2018, many key quantum-related components have been placed under export controls. High-precision lasers, ultra-stable optical materials, and advanced coatings are difficult to obtain from international suppliers. For countries relying on imported components, this creates a structural dependency that limits scalability. Hanyuan-1 was developed with this constraint fully in mind. From the beginning, the project assumed that access to foreign components could not be relied upon. By leveraging Hubei's optoelectronics industry cluster, the development teams localized nearly all core components. From laser sources to optical lenses, from modulation systems to noise suppression technologies, the hardware stack was rebuilt domestically. This was not a simple act of substitution. In many cases, domestic alternatives did not exist at the required performance level, so engineers had to design, test, and refine components specifically for atomic quantum control, often starting from first principles. That challenge ultimately worked in China's favor. By operating within a tightly integrated industrial ecosystem, feedback cycles were dramatically shorter, design changes could be tested almost immediately, manufacturing issues resolved in parallel, and improvements folded into the next iteration without waiting on external suppliers or foreign approvals. What might have taken years through fragmented global supply chains was compressed into continuous, fast-moving engineering progress. The laser systems are a clear example of this effort. Atomic qubits require lasers with extremely narrow line widths high power stability, and minimal frequency drift. Developing such lasers is not trivial. The team had to overcome problems like cavity surface damage, unstable output power, and long-term frequency drift. Solving these issues took years of focused engineering. The result was a laser system that not only meets the requirements for atomic quantum control, but does so with a fraction of the size and power consumption of foreign equivalents. In some cases, the domestically developed lasers consume one-tenth the power of imported alternatives. This is not just a technical achievement. It removes reliance on external supply chains and reduces costs across the entire system. Another reason Hanyuan 1 crossed the commercialization threshold is the ecosystem built around it. Quantum computing has long suffered from a usability problem. Many systems require deep knowledge of quantum physics to operate effectively. Cloud platforms help, but they also introduce data security concerns and limit integration with existing workflows, especially for industries handling sensitive information. Recognizing this, the teams behind Hanyuan 1 built a full cloud-based quantum computing platform alongside the hardware. This platform allows users to design quantum algorithms visually, optimize them for the underlying machine, and simulate large-scale quantum behavior without mastering atomic physics. Complexity is hidden behind tools designed for engineers and researchers, not just physicists. More than 50 universities and companies have already joined the project to explore quantum applications. That level of adoption indicates that the system is not just technically functional, but practically accessible. Commercial validation followed. The first commercial Hanyuan 1 system was delivered to a subsidiary of China Mobile. Beyond domestic deployment, the system secured export orders from Pakistan. Exporting quantum computing hardware is not easy. It requires robust documentation, training, and confidence that the system can operate reliably outside its original environment. Only a small number of quantum systems worldwide have reached that stage. The Hanyuan project also plans to build China's first neutral atom quantum computing power center. This facility will host clusters of machines operating around the clock providing continuous quantum computing services to enterprises. Instead of each organization owning and maintaining its own hardware, companies will be able to access quantum resources on demand, much like cloud computing today. This model resolves two persistent challenges at once. It lowers barriers to entry by removing the need for organizations to operate their own quantum hardware, and it keeps sensitive data within secure domestic environments, addressing one of the biggest concerns surrounding quantum cloud services. Over time, this approach turns quantum computing from an isolated capability into shared infrastructure, accelerating both adoption and practical experience. So, if China is already selling and exporting quantum computers while the West is still focused on laboratory experiments and future roadmaps, will the West ever truly catch up to China, or has it already fallen behind? Share what you think in the comments, and if you want the real story behind the world's fastest moving AI and tech breakthroughs, make sure to like and subscribe to Evolving AI for daily updates.